Hi everyone, it's Carla here, Aka the Stitchy Witch, and today is Thursday, and I thought I would do a little video, a little stitching, a little chatting, and see how we get on. And it's great to be back because I haven't actually done a video since my last um, Whip Parade, which was in early November. And I haven't done a live stream, and there's a lot of reasons why I haven't done any of this. <laughs> and I will let you know um, what's been going on. But I'm glad that you can join me today, and thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what I've got here on the screen. This is a new chart. Yes, it's a new start, as you do. And this one is called... Um, home for the Holidays and the artist is Thomas Kincaid, very popular and the um, designer is Michelle, obviously from Heaven and Earth Designs. And you'll be surprised to learn that I'm actually doing this one as a mini and you're probably thinking, why are you doing a mini? <laughs> well, I'll explain. So, I went onto the Heaven and Earth Design site and I thought, well, I'd like to do a chart that has a Christmassy feel to it, but I don't want to do a big chart. And so I looked at all the charts that had a Christmassy feel and I thought, well, you know, the ones I like the best are all really big and huge and I really don't want to get on board with another huge design. So if I'm going to do something I like, I want to look at the mock-up and see what I think of it when it's um, reduced in quality. Um, so I really want to look at the details and see whether I can live with them, whether they're okay for me, blah, 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 you know, and then I'll base my decision on the visual um, representation that I get in the mock-up. Um, so, because I really do love Thomas Kincaid, I haven't done any of his charts and I thought, well, you know, I'd really like to do one of his charts. So I went in and I did uh, look around at all of them and this is actually a new release and I really like the composition of it. I love those reflections from the house, the way they fall onto the snow and it's got a little bit of movement. So there's a bit of action going on in the scene. Whilst I really do like the ones that have no, you know, no, no movement in them, like there's no people going by or anything like that. There's nothing happening. They're very sort of still and tranquil. They're still beautiful. But I like that this one's got a little bit of activity in it as well. And overall, the whole effect, uh, the colours in it appeal to me. So then I thought, well, you know what, even though I like it, I don't want to do like a huge one that was there, the regular, which is really big. So then I decided I'm going to go and have a look um, and see if I can get a mini version. And I did get one pretty quickly, to be honest, because... I thought they can take something like up to eight weeks and longer to to if you request. Um, oh, just hold on. Something's popped up on my screen. When you request a mini, it can take a while for it to work. And I thought at this time of year, I'm probably not going to have that. Um, get off my screen. Don't you just hate it when your pop ups happen when you're in the middle of recording? Um, but no, frankly, it was quite quick, so I was quite pleased with that. And and then off we went. I looked at the mock-up. I was happy enough with the mock-up. There is a lot of detail. I understand that. But you can still make out the characters, and that's the important thing for me. Because the feel of this is all sort of very... The picture isn't blurry, but it's got that kind of tranquil um, stillness, you know, everything, all the... The, the images all kind of got all these blended trees and sky and there's nothing really sharp that you have to see in this image. So a little bit of loss of detail, I think, wouldn't be a terrible thing on a type of landscape picture like this. So um, I wanted to check that you could still see, if you look where I'm pointing here, there's a little dog. These are the back legs of the dog. I know that I've only got a small picture of it here on the screen below but my worry is that you're not going to be able to make out the smallest detail as long as you can make it out what it is like whether it's an animal or a footprint or whatever it is I think that's probably doable it doesn't for me doesn't necessarily have to be that sharp so it's give and take for me I compensate you know with one thing or the other compensate you know compromising time 
which <laughs> we're all running out of with uh, a little bit of loss of detail and you know just weighing things up in the balance and that's what I've been doing a lot of this month which I'm going to actually talk to you about I'm going to try and do some stitching now but I've got so much to say I think if I, you know <laughs> if I start concentrating on the stitching I'm not going to be able to remember everything that I'm telling you so yeah maybe we'll just make this like a half chat video and a little bit of stitching video if I get a chance <laughs> so bear with me stay with me um because I like filling you in on, on, you know, the reasons why I choose to do things. And I think it might sometimes help people when they're making their own decisions, what they can actually look for, the things that they can, you know, try to figure out when they've got a bit more details about them. So because I, I liked, I thought, well, OK, you can still see I haven't finished this half of the dog here, but I think it's going to be OK. And so I think I got away, I think I basically got away with not doing the regular version. And also, I don't really want to have tons of regular charts, to be honest. I'm quite happy doing smaller ones. I'm getting into a smaller zone lately. I know that we go through phases. I definitely go through a phase of, oh my God, I want to do a super duper huge thing. And then I just get burnt out after a while. I just, I personally just get burnt out. And... So now I'm on this, I'm on the bandwagon of doing things that are not small, but things that I'm actually going to finish like in a relatively decent amount of time that I can say, hey, I've got to finish like at the end of next year or something, you know. So this brings me on to my next point. I've started the Thomas Kincaid uh, Home for the Holidays. So what I had to do is I had kind of a real moment, a real moment where I was thinking, I'm so overwhelmed with all the whips that I have. And I know that I don't have as many as I could have, but I still feel overwhelmed personally. And I just don't know. I'm kind of like, I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to pick up this one. I want to pick up that one. They're all driving me crazy. I, I'm rotating them all the time, but I'm doing dribbles of progress in most of them. I'm feeling like, I don't know, like something's bubbling up inside me that's churning. And, you know, frustration, I'm feeling frustrated and I have to actually acknowledge this. So what I did was I brought out all my whips. I went through them all and I said, right, I'm just going to pick the ones I truly love. And these are the ones that are coming with me into 2023. These are the ones I want to stitch on. Right. Because I just cannot do this whole there's four of them in a cupboard that are still waiting and they're all going to take 10 years. There's another three over there. That, and then there's all these other small ones I've started. I just getting frustrated. So I sat down and I just narrowed it down and I'm bringing on my biggest one, which was the first whip that I bought, I think, River Walk Charm. And that's one that I'm definitely going to continue with because it's um, I'm 25% of the way through or something. And... I'm not going to lose that amount of progress. Um, the most, the ones that I've chosen that are more recent, they've got much less progress on them, something like 6%, 8%. You know, I'm not going to cry too much over that, to be honest. Um, don't get me wrong, I love all of them, but I just feel like I had to, you know, clear my head. Spring clean or winter clean my brain, I just feel so much more relaxed now now that i've chosen the ones that i want to bring forward into my focus in 2023 so i've been working on this one as you can see got quite a good bit of progress on this already and already hit eight percent in since november i mean that's the kind of progress you can make on a mini you know if you're doing a little bit every day so that really suits me um i feel more accomplished than getting one percent done over three months <laughs> like i just do um but i know that the river walk chime i started in 2019 i don't want to drop it so i'm quite happy to keep putting in plugging in that one as a focus piece and eventually you know i'll get to a, a good amount done with it um so yeah that's that's where that's where what i had to do i had to just like be honest with myself and what it is I want to you know what do I want to achieve where am I going with this I have a busy life I have a family I have a cat that drives me crazy I have lots of things going on um I need to focus on 
more realistic things for myself, more realistic way of going forward. And I'm not telling anybody else what's good for them or bad for them. On the contrary, I'm trying to sort of explain to you, you know, if you do at some point feel that you're overwhelmed, don't be afraid to be honest with yourself. And if you have to cut something out, cut it out. It's a hobby. It is a hobby. Don't let it kill you, or make you feel guilty or make you feel bad. I mean, I do feel a little bit sad that, you know, maybe tiny bit like a failure because I thought I could do all of these things. But evidently I can't. It just, it, it for some reason, I it doesn't make me happy to have 20 whips waiting for me to do. It doesn't make me personally feel like I'm achieving stuff. So I have to rethink everything and, you know, go forward at a pace that suits me with things that I'm really enjoying stitching. Because I have found lately, sometimes I'm sitting there just stitching, thinking, I don't really want to be stitching this, but I have to stitch this because I started it in like 2020 or whatever. And that's, to me, that just feels like, why am I wasting eight hours today stitching something that's not making me happy? You know, so... I have to do what's good for me and you have to do what's good for you and it making you happy is doing a rotation of 30 40 50 that is fantastic keep doing it but yeah be honest with yourself because like I've said before I have to constantly keep checking in with myself to make sure that I am happy with what I'm doing otherwise it's all going to fall to pieces and I don't want to lose my stitchy bug that's the other thing if I just ignore those deep feelings of frustration. I will end up losing my stitchy bug. There'll be no more stitching going on. I'll just not come back and you won't see me again. <laughs> Hooray, I hear you say. <laughs> and I'll just move on to something else like knitting or crochet. And I do not want that to happen because I've enjoyed this entire journey with you guys. I really have enjoyed it. And I want to keep it going, but I want to keep it going, not just for the channel, or for the channel's sake even but for my you know for my own um my own happiness my own contentment i mean it's really important that you're content with what you're doing and, and i do, do want, want to come, come back with another, another couple, couple of videos, videos because, because i do want, want to show you something else very small well not that small but smallish that i have started and i want to show it to you and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to leave it as a surprise. I'm going to show you uh, something which has more meaning for me, let's say. And it's not a family photograph or anything. But I'm going to come back and talk about that. Maybe give you a bit of background into the actual subject itself, if anyone's interested. And I'm actually, okay, I'll give you a little hint. And I'm crocheting a queen, a historical, sorry, not crochet. What am I talking about? I'm cross-stitching a queen, a historical queen. I wonder if you can guess which one it is because I have a favourite <laughs> and I want to come back and, and show you my progress and I've decided to start it in, it's a small chart, I've decided to start it in um, doing cross country and a little bit of an extreme cross country as well so oh my goodness I don't know how that's going to come out. We'll have to wait and see won't we because, <coughs> excuse me. Cross country can be a little bit difficult to do if you're not used to doing it. I've heard so many horror stories about cross country that I've always had a fear of doing it. And I think now I'm, I'm kind of open to the idea of making a few mistakes. If I practice something um, like I wouldn't want to try, didn't want to try doing cross country or extreme cross country in a large chart for some reason, because much, you know, I don't know if I tried to do cross country in a huge chart and made a couple of mistakes, I would not be very happy to continue with that chart. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> this is terrible. I get a really dry throat when I talk a lot. I don't know why. I think it's a floss tube thing. Um, so I decided to do this cross country with a, a smaller chart and see where I go. 
and if it works out then maybe i'll do other charts with cross country i what i really like about cross country is obviously the speed it's so much faster than um doing anything related to parking so much faster however be prepared for a lot of counting so here we go. There's a lot of counting even just doing these rows because you have to count hop over other stitches and count them as well. Especially if you're going a little bit. So uh, even though I'm working in rows, right, I still go downwards uh, if I've got space. If there's too many park threads in the way, then I'll just park around there. But generally, if I've got space, I will park I will continue doing stitches around and I'll go down as you know a few rows like now I've got a couple of rows just in this color which is the good old 3799 which is like a dark gray so there's actually there's no 310 in this chart unbelievably there's no 310 in this chart and what I've noticed is 310 is particularly thin DMC thread so the 3799 grey that I'm using here has got slightly nicer coverage than 310, thicker, because the 3799, the very dark grey, is thicker than the 310, absolutely no question. The, I'm talking about the thread itself is thicker. The 310 is unbelievably thin. I don't know why that is. It must be something to do with the way they manufacture them, but... They're, they're, it doesn't matter where I buy 310 from, it could be any store, but they're always thin, thinner than other colours. Don't know why that is. So here we go, and I'm really enjoying snaking my way down because it looks so neat. I've got a thing about neatness as well. So it's really quite easy to get going. With, uh, with your block colours and don't forget if you're aiming to watch TV at the same time you've got to be a little bit more careful where you're going because sometimes you'll look up at the television and you won't realise where you've gone down with your needle and your needle's behind and you look back and you think where am I where do I have to put where do I have to push my needle up I don't know where I am <laughs> <laughs> so that can be quite amusing or frustrating okay I'm going this way just a few little rows with this so what I like at the moment is I'm rotating this one with the snow queen and the snow queen I have on a hoop and I'm working that one sort of in hand on my hoop I don't have it attached to the Lowry stand or anything and um, so that's a nice one I can also do in bed, just sort of lying in bed with my hoop. And it's really comfortable to do that. And I actually have been lying in bed stitching some evenings fairly early now, about 9 p.m. Because, oh my God, is it so cold at the moment. And um, we have vamped up our heating, which is going to cost us a bomb, by the way. Vamped up our heating and I'm still cold. My hands are frozen. <laughs> which is not nice when you're stitching to have such cold hands. And so I'd, I've got like a hot water bottle for my hands. So I have to keep putting my hands on this bottle and then doing a few stitches, putting my hands back on this bottle, like, oh my God, I'm gonna just freeze. And I don't know, honestly, it's just so cold. Actually snowing today in Edinburgh. Um, woke up this morning, looked out of the window and said, oh my God, everything's white, it looks so cool. It didn't last by um, mid, by the afternoon because, yeah, it wasn't that kind of snow that was going to last. But it might snow again, according to the forecast. In fact, I think it's going to. And um, so I picked up Misty, the cat, and I put, put her up to the window so she could see. And she's kind of like, her eyes just looking at these snowflakes. She's an indoor cat and she hasn't ever been out. She's eight months now, by the way, guys. She's got really, really big. And yeah, she's an adorable, affectionate cat, although she can be a real pain at times, I'll admit. She can drive me up the wall, but we still love her. 
<laughs> and but she's still very curious and she's into every nook and cranny and she wants to be in everything you're doing you know everything you're doing she wants to be in it so i put her up at the window and i said hey misty look at this and she just her eyes when she saw all these snowflakes coming down she was really excited about it but i said i'm afraid you're not going to be able to go out because we live in the middle of the city and there are so many horror stories on this you know group i'm in like a neighborhood group every day someone has a post up saying the cat's been killed or the cat's been hit by a car and the cat's missing and they don't know where the cat is and the cat hasn't come home and this and that. It's just frightening the amount of posts people are putting up about their cats being, you know, missing and harmed. No, just, it's not worth it. It really isn't. So, yeah. It is a big shame. So that snow is going to be, it's probably gone now, by now. If I look out of the window, it'll be gone. But it's actually nice than just having rain, because we've been having a lot of just drizzle and rain and rain. And having so much rain can be, I don't know, can be a little bit depressing after a while. It really can. Right, so hopefully I've parked in the right place there. So there I've done like another little bunch of colour and parked. Now, did I do that one? Yes. I have to move on to another colour, which is 317. Let's see if I can get my... I'm using envelopes at the moment. I think this for me has actually been so much quicker to get my colours out. Um, just plain envelopes I can show you here with um, the number on the envelope so all I do is I go into my box and just pick out the colour I need without worrying about the bobbin or anything and I just find that kind of easier at the moment I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of kitting up and bobbinating and all that stuff I think some of you know that so I try to avoid doing it if I can and so having all the envelopes with all the numbers has actually really been a lot faster to be honest now what I'm also doing is I'm running my thread up th through a few stitches at the back like one or two I practiced this method last year and leaving a tiny little tiny little bit not pulling it completely to the front just so that later it'll be anchored it'll be anchored by other threads or you can even do like the tiniest tiniest little knot if you want to because I'm not I'm not in favor of turning my thing all the way around and I find all the thread I was doing all these waist knots at the front they were just annoying me so um, yeah this is like a new technique that I've made up myself <laughs> just to make things go quicker although I think that two-handed stitching does actually go a little bit faster than um, than stitching just with one hand definitely does and I can give you I mean I'm not really going into the stats that much but I can tell you that I've done 6,800 stitches on this since November and there are 83,000 850 stitches in the whole piece so that's very doable and I had worked out that if I had if I do something like 200 stitches a day I would be well into finishing this before the end of next year um, which is almost upon us and so it feels like something that's achievable you know 
I don't know, maybe I have also thought that I'm having a midlife crisis and thinking that, you know, maybe I'm just going to like pop off one of these days. I'm going to leave all these big charts unfinished <laughs> and I don't like the idea of that. So I want to actually have some kind of finish, you know, in the near future even, um, which is not going to happen if I'm just doing dribbles of progress on a whole 10 or 15 of them. So if I, yeah, this is it. I just want to get my focus pieces and I want to see real progress. This is the mood I'm in. I want to see real progress and I want to see it soon. That's just the way I'm, I am going. That is the way it's rolling for me. And I think some of you might understand that kind of intensity that you want to see a finish because I think for the last two years, what have I finished? I know I did Bewitched, but I think that was was the first Hade I did, but I think I finished that one at the end of 2020, and I think that's the only Hade that I have. Well, it was the only Hade I'd started then. It's the only one I finished. And the rate I've been going, I will not be seeing finished for the next three or four, five years. So it just wasn't, just wasn't hitting the spot for me, guys. It's just not hitting the spot for me, although, Having said that, I would be a complete hypocrite to pare down my whips and then go start new ones. That would be ridiculous. That would be completely defeating the object of what I've been trying to trying to do in the first place. So no new starts in 2023. <laughs> I don't care. I've decided I'm going to take into 2023 the ones that I've already been working on that I want to focus on. And I think it's about four of them. And I allowed myself this one because of the, oh, it's Christmas and I wanted to do a Christmas themed one. Um, and I've allowed myself a new start, which is the, the little small queen one that I'm doing. But that one, I'm not, that's just going to be as and when I feel like picking it up and it's cross country completely. So that's not going to take, it's like 60,000 stitches or something. Not going to take huge time. And that's it. That really is it. Do not enable me anymore. Okay. <laughs> I am telling you. So I'm going to really live vicariously through everybody for the rest of next year. And hey, if I get a finish next year, I will do a new start at the end of 2023, the beginning of 2024. Um, and I really think I will now that I've kind of got this alignment going. Could be this one if I decide to continue on through most of the year. But I know that I think my Riverwalk charm is is kind of being the focus piece lately. So I want to keep going with that. I think I could actually get that done in less than two years. That regular piece. I know I have like 300,000 stitches left to do, but I could actually get that one finished in two years. If I pull my finger out and stop messing around. So I'm hoping anything I've said here makes sense to you um, and that you're understanding what I'm trying to say. And I'm actually really happy because I know a lot of you are very understanding and you do, under, you know, you are very supportive as well, which I really appreciate. And so many of you send me emails and messages to say how much you appreciate my honesty as well and um, that I'm not going to lie to you and pretend when I, I'm happy about stuff when I'm not happy about stuff I'm happy to come on and tell you when I feel like something has to change or something's not working and I'll just talk to you about it and I know that there are those of you out there that are very supportive in that way and it is amazing and this is one of the reasons why I'm here and I so enjoy doing the live streams and the videos because I know that it's a lovely connection that we all have between us in this community. And I'm also connected to many of you floss tubers that I watch as well. Um, I may not always comment on your videos, but I follow you and I admire the things you're working on and I like to see your progress and I, I genuinely care that, you know, about your welfare, that you're okay and everything. Um, and it really is a lovely community to be in. One of the best, I would say. 
Um, I don't feel that there's ever any jealousy or there's ever any, you know, bad sort of mouthing about anyone. I think it's just nice the way everybody's so inclusive and how inclusive we floss tubers are about each other as well. There's no competition. It's just lovely. It's just so relaxed. Everybody's doing their thing. Everybody's showcasing what they do. It's just amazing. I have to get a new colour again now. Where are we at? So there's a lot of greys and blues, as you can see. And I think that it's a nice contrast to my Riverwalk charm because, where is this colour? Oh, please don't tell me I've lost a colour. Excuse me while I have a look a bit deeper in my box. Where are you? It's a nice contrast working this chart along with my Riverwalk charm because Riverwalk charm is all oranges and fuchsias and all these beautiful summery autumn colours browns and greens in the tree it's lovely so this one i'm working on now comes in and it's like oh we've switched to winter now we've, we've gone from from autumn actually i'm not sure when riverwalk charm chart is kind of set it could be well there's a lot of leaves on the trees so it could be like early autumn But it also looks a bit summery as well because it's quite bright with the sunshine on it. Okay. See, the problem with doing this, um, putting these things into an envelope, is it can get very tangled up. And that's one of the things I'm not happy about. And I should spend a little bit of time <clears throat> cutting my threads into decent sized lengths so that they don't get so tangled up. But you know what it's like, you have good intentions that don't always come about. At least that's in my case. Right. So I think I've more or less updated you on the whole stitching saga. There's nothing else really, I mean, that I can update you on. Um, I've got no massive plans this year. I will be at home um, enjoying the holidays with my husband and my son and we will be planning to do a few things. There's so much going on in Edinburgh at Christmas there's beautiful shows and things and there's an ice rink up now an outdoor rink ice rink and um, there is just lovely things going on there's like a festival of lights in the zoo and in the botanical gardens all sorts of stuff I want to get around to going and visiting a few of these things because I never really get the chance to and I'd like to just you know just do more outdoorsy stuff even though it's winter I want to go and just do more stuff which is another one of the reasons why I want to get off my butt and, you know, not spend eight hours a day stitching. I just, I feel like I want to do my stitching. I want to enjoy the stitchy time I do. And then I want to do something else. And that also includes catching up with my reading because my reading has perished since I've been racing along with all my whips. And I just not reading all the books that I download and I'm not, you know, not knitting on my knitted pieces. And I feel like, sometimes I felt like I'm kind of stuck in a stitching twilight zone, all on my own and not able to get out because as soon as I do some, uh, some stitching on one thing, I'm like, I have to go and stitch on the other one now because I haven't touched it. And I have to go and stitch on the other one now because I haven't touched it. And it starts to get a bit frantic for me and I feel pressure. That's what I feel. I start to feel pressure. And I know from talking to other people and other floss tubers, they have felt, some of them have felt the same way. They've felt, you know, and also because they want to keep up, 
giving progress to the channel and they want to you know have something to show you um so it's pressure 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 and then after a while you look up and think where is my life <laughs> i'm still sitting here day after day um so yeah sometimes you hit a roadblock and you you say i've got to put things into more balance some things have to go into a little bit more balance. Unless you're just completely happy to stitch all day long. Brilliant. But I felt like I needed a bit more balance, to be fair. And now I'm so happy with my stitching because I'm doing like an hour or two in the morning. Then I'm making sure that I get out anywhere to do anything. And also on the weekends, going out with my family. Um, making sure that I do do that. And don't just say, oh no, I've got to sit and stitch. Um, you can all go ahead um, yeah so sorry if I'm rambling on and on to myself I'm just you know just reflecting really on how I've been feeling this past month or two and I find it now also I'm really looking forward to actually sitting down and stitching because I've been out for a few hours and I think I can't wait to get home to get back to my Thomas Kincaid or I can't wait to do the Snow Queen this evening or something because I've actually got a bit of variation in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is difficult. Sometimes you can get into a little bit of a rut and you have to kind of work things out, you know, in your life. You have to work things out for yourself, like find that balance that makes you happy. I think I think we all we've all been there and I think we've all gotten fed up of things that we do after a while if we overdo them or you know there will come a time where you think I've got to do something else for a while or I have to monitor this or change something or do something a bit differently so that's how it's been so I'm I'm looking forward to going into 2023 with some finishes and and with much more excitement and enthusiasm for my stitching that's what I'd like to say that's that's exactly how I feel it's well put I want to go into 2023 with with more enthusiasm I think I was losing the enthusiasm for it um, because I was feeling a bit overwhelmed so now I don't feel so overwhelmed because I don't have so much to do and yeah I've compartmentalized things a bit better for myself so yeah it's it's a great outcome and I don't feel guilty that's one thing I thought I thought I might feel guilty if I if I don't work on this but actually no I actually feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulder and I've got more perspective I know where I'm going I feel more relaxed as well about stuff like I actually feel like I can slow down because when I was doing so many whips I was trying to rush 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 through all of them and now I just feel like hey yeah I'm only got only just going to work on these ones so I can do whatever I like and just relax so it's helped me to feel more relaxed I just couldn't get myself relaxed to be honest okay Misty oh she's looking up at me like who on earth are you talking to <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't see anybody else here in the room so yeah I think I'm going to leave it here today guys because I've done a lot of talking and you're probably sick and tired of listening to me um so I'll give you a break now but thank you for reaching this far if you have if you have been um with me throughout this video and yeah I just want to say I'm looking forward to coming back with another video to show you my progress on the snow queen and let's see what what I can get done I've had what, one thing I did forget to mention was I've had a lot of problems with my laptop it's been crashing it's been going crazy I've been trying to fix it I've done a hard factory reset so far so good it hasn't crashed during this video um so yeah hopefully that's gonna that's gonna work because I do not feel like buying a new laptop at this time of year I have so much so many things to pay for you know it's just so annoying when that happens but I still want to get my videos out and I would have done this one sooner had my laptop not been messing around. So that's another good thing. Another positive thing is that it's working so far. Fingers crossed for me it continues to work and I can come back with another video. So I just want to say I won't just I won't say Merry Christmas or anything because I will be back before then to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, 
I just want to say take care, God bless, look after yourselves and I will be back soon. See you then.